Support for this episode comes from Modern Football Technology. Modern Football Technology provides real-time opponent tendencies and self-scout while eliminating manual data entry into Huddle, DV Sport, and Exos. If you're tired of tools that are time-consuming to learn and perform inconsistently at best, then we recommend Modern Football for a fresh perspective. Schedule a demo today at teammofo.com to see a battle-tested tool that's proven to perform and deliver value. Mention Coach and Coordinator Podcast or use the coupon code CC10 to receive 10% off your first year. And listen to our recent episode featuring Folsom High School Defensive Coordinator Jordan Ersick to learn more about how the 2023 California State Champion uses modern football to dominate their opponents. I remember just being at LSU, and it was just always a lot of stuff to do. So a lot of times, as GAs and analysts, we wouldn't be able to really be in position. Me, uh, I just remember thinking, when it comes my time to run my own room at the college level, how am I going to know I'm prepared for this? So what I used to do is, from being in defensive staff meetings, listening to coaches teach stuff, Coach Aranda teach the staff, well, you know, at the end of the day, I would just go in and I would set up a camcorder and I would go in the linebacker room and I would just pretend like it was, you know, a room full of guys. And I would, like, teach a uh, install or teach a defense or teach a concept as if it was a room full of guys. And I would rewatch it and be like, oh, man, look how many times I said, uh, uh, uh. You know, look how many times I did this. So, like, you know, I wasn't making eye contact here. And I would just rewatch them and see what I could do better. As coaches, we always seem to be in a hurry to get to where we want to be to get to that position that we set as a career goal. In that haste, we may forget we have plenty of opportunity to improve ourselves and build our skills in the place we are at. That's exactly what Caleb Collins did in progressing through the ranks from being a high school teacher and coach to an analyst to an on-field position coach in the FBS. He found ways to use the positions he was in to get the reps he needed to improve his skills as a coach. In this episode, he shares examples of that, as well as the methods and progressions he uses to coach the outside linebackers at Baylor. While he gets focused on the specifics of outside linebacker play as we go, you can learn from the way he thinks about and the methods he uses to prepare his position for success on the field. What you see on tape is a direct reflection of what you teach and how you teach. Video is important, but if you don't teach well, you're not going to like what you see on your video. First Down Playbook has been helping coaches teach better for 13 years. It allows you to present installs, playbooks, and practice cards in half the time with NFL quality. Coaching tools like video pairing, a player app, practice schedules, and wristband sheets have made First Down Playbook a program management system with everything in one place. If you're in a position of leadership with your football program, receive a free one-week look at First Down Playbook. Call them at 512-814-6158 or visit them on their website or social media. Mention Coach and Coordinator Podcast or use the coupon code COACH24 to receive a $100 discount off the normal $700 First Down Playbook team membership price. Links and the phone number are in the show notes. On today's episode, we're going to dig into outside linebacker play and how those guys are coached. And joining me to discuss that and go into the details of it is the outside linebackers coach at Baylor, Caleb Collins. Coach Collins, it's great to have you here on the podcast. Man, I'm great to be here. Keith, appreciate you for having me, man. I want to start here with a little bit of your background. So you've been at Baylor now. You were in an off-field position as quality control prior to that. You were an analyst at LSU, and before LSU, coached high school ball. And you really feel that that start, coaching and teaching high school, has been something that's been instrumental in helping you to get on the field. If you would explain what was the most important aspect of what you did as a teacher slash coach that's helped you get to the position you are today. One, starting with the coaches that coached me, coaches like, you know, Coach Roberts and uh, coach, coach Scott and, you know, some of those coaches I was with at Southeastern and even my high school coaches. Uh, I went to, you know, North Shore High School and 
really, but just learning about just the importance of being a good teacher. You know, when I was a high school coach, man, I just remember not even knowing I wanted to go into coaching, but, you know, one of the things that kind of helped me knew that I was doing what I was supposed to do was just my love for it. And I loved even the teaching part. You know, a lot of times, you know, you see some high school coaches that, you know, just don't really want nothing to do with the teaching part, but I, I loved it. You know, I was a world geography teacher. I taught U.S. history as, as well for a little bit, but, I mean, I just love the whole deal of getting in your PLCs, prepping a lesson plan, you know, thinking about how you were going to teach that. I love thinking about, hey, you know, this is going to be our district assessment scores, like, you know, who's going to have a top score competing in that aspect of it. I also love the evals. You know, it would be like, you know, the, the people that were over you. You know, I remember Melody Shelton was her name, but, you know, she, she would come in my classroom and sit in the back and eval me going through a lesson. She would be honest with me, like, hey, coach, like, great job at this. Hey, you could have done this better. Hey, you could have engaged the class a little more. Hey, you could have, you know, asked questions. You could have used this method of teaching. Like, you know, all that stuff was cool to me, and it helped me. And now for you, running your own room, certainly a big aspect of that is everything that you're going to teach them in that classroom setting, and that's coming into play for you now. Yeah, yeah, no no doubt. You know, I remember when I was, not to jump ahead, but uh, I remember just being at LSU, and it was just always a lot of stuff to do. So a lot of times, as GAs and analysts, we wouldn't be able to really be in position meetings because it was just always something we could be doing for practice prep. But uh, I just remember thinking, like, man, like, you know, when it's when it comes my time to run my own room at the college level, like, how am I gonna know I'm I'm ready? How am I gonna know I'm prepared for this? So what I used to do is like, you know, from being in defensive staff meetings, listening to coaches teach stuff, Coach Aranda, like, teach the staff, well, you know, at the end of the day, I would just go in and I would set up a camcorder and I would go in a linebacker room and I would just pretend like it was, you know, a room full of full of guys and I would, like, teach a, a install or teach a defense or teach a concept or, you know, teach, a, like, about, you know, attacking a protection or something as if it was a room full of guys. And I would rewatch it and be like, oh, man, look how many times I said, uh, uh, uh. You know, look how many times I did this. So, like, you know, I wasn't making eye contact here. And I would just rewatch them and see what I could do better. That's a, that's a great technique. I don't know if I've ever heard anybody do that before, but certainly a big part of becoming a good teacher is getting your reps, right? You think back to, you know, that first year of teaching and, as you said, being evaluated and the, just the things that you would pick up every day. And, hey, being a teacher, you got to yeah. reflect and get better all the time. No doubt, no doubt, because it's, it's you know, as coaches – we hear so much ball from being in meetings, from, you know, listen to this, listen to that, going to this clinic. You hear so much ball, but a lot of times you just assume, oh, I would teach that this way. But it's just different when you got a room full of guys. Like, you know, you not got to think about what questions might be asked. You got to think about all kind of stuff. So I think that's one of the things that would worry me and why I felt like, hey, I need to, I need to make sure I know how I'm going to teach this, you know, just during my time as a GA and analyst. So we're going to get into some of your progressions today in teaching the outside linebackers. But before we do that, let's talk about the guys that you want in the room. What traits are you looking for in an outside linebacker? One of the things that I really feel like I, I favored a link towards is, you know, just length at the jack spot, man. I feel like a guy with a lot of length, he can really make up for, for a little bit, you know, maybe some of the technical things, maybe some of the, physicality things that a guy may lack, man, but I just think it's just something about having a guy with length that just owns an edge. You know, some of the things, other things that I look for is like, you know, typical things that you would look for in any great person to play on the line is, you know, motor, a first step, get off, ability to set an edge, as I already talked about, uh, rush ability, especially at the jack spot. I probably could have led off with that, but just, you know, like, does his high school tape or does the tape show or you know, for transfers, does the tape show the ability to rush the quarterback? Because, you know, in this 3-4 scheme or, you know, this, this this scheme that we run, I mean, what we lack in athleticism and, you know, your guys in the middle with your four eyes and your zero nose or, you know, if you're going to shade them or whatever, but what you lack in athleticism there, we feel like you need to make up for athleticism in the jack position. And that's really just the whole mindset of it, you know what I'm saying? Like you want to get – you know, we use the term all the time. Our D-line coach, Dennis Johnson, I always talk about, like, evaluating guys and saying, is he a block hitter? You know, is this guy a block hitter? Can he grow into a block hitter? You know what I'm saying? Can he be a forward? Why? The Jack, we want that guy. We want that, 
We don't want another infantry guy. We want a special forces guy. We want a guy that's going to dictate protections. We want a guy that's going to require special attention. So you're looking for those things from a trait aspect, and you're looking for those things from a personality aspect. Does he see himself as the guy third down, I'm going to go make the play? Like, does he see himself uh, as that alpha? So, you know, that's a lot of things that we think about when we recruit a Jack and physicality. I feel like it's somewhat of a sliding scale because not all the guys that I've been blessed to coach here at Baylor have all been guys with length. Sometimes I feel like if a guy doesn't have that length, he, one, he could still have, you know, wingspan, but he can just be a physical guy. Like, he can just be a twitched up physical guy. I feel like that's, that's also something that helps with those guys who aren't, you know, your 6'4", 6'5". You know, if, it's, if he is a 6'3", 6'2", 6'1", guy, you know, is he still causing problems with, you know, his explosiveness, his athleticism, his first step, you know, those types of things. Yeah, man, it's a fun position to recruit and evaluate. So looking at getting these guys started, right, and looking at a teaching progression here, that install, mm-hmm. you, know, you mentioned you used to practice it, now you get to do it. That install, day one, what are the things you're really setting the tone with that this is what this position is going to be about, this is what I need you guys to do? Oh, yeah, definitely edge setters. Like, edge setters, that's that's just something that I feel like is a premium is in, in 3-4 defense, in our defense. I feel like, you know, like the offense has to understand that when it comes to running the ball on the perimeter to the jack, you know, if we got two jacks on the field, but like this is where the, this is where the stuff stops. This is where it ends. You fall off a cliff right here. And then, you know, with everything you know about 3-4 defense, you know, now you got to funnel it into the interior guys and so on. But the ball is not going to be ran on the perimeter this is what this is it like that's one thing that i feel like you can't get enough of emphasizing that it's just hard edges setting the freaking edge i feel like that's the thing that starts everything i can't emphasize that enough we'll be in a good position if we're setting edges and then the next thing just generating a pass rush with your guys as you're teaching the different things they need to see in the picture right formation recognition where's the strength how many guys are on the surface to that side, how they're going to adjust. Exactly. That's something that I feel like coaching Jacks, I don't really think it's hard, but I do think that's the thing where the, the, you can't really compromise on alignment. You know, the guys have to be able to recognize the formation and get aligned properly. Guys have to be able to recognize the back sets, whether, hey, okay, I'm a five technique. Do I need to tighten down? Do I need to widen out? Okay, am I getting stretched at me? Or am I getting, you know, split something, you know, some type of split action where I tight end like, Alignment is something where I feel like, you know, it's not really complex, but I feel like that's kind of where you can be as detailed as possible when it comes to alignment, and that'll kind of uh, set you up for success. Because a lot of times when you're coaching the jack, you know, the reason why you're looking for a guy with such a high motor, because a lot of the times when you grade grading film, you really grading them off like, you know, they first two steps. Am I taking the right step? Am I false stepping? Are you? And then after that, it's like, you know, are you playing with great effort? That's a big part of it. So I feel like alignment is really is really crucial when it comes to like, you know, putting yourself in position to make a play, or uh, you know, the difference between getting a sack or getting a hurry, or the difference between, you know, getting a TFL or, you know, just getting a tackle. Like I feel like it, it starts with just aligning for success. And I know for you that the tool that you've been able to use at least classroom portion or, or walkthrough portion is go army edge and it's something I know you guys had a walkthrough room when you were at LSU mm-hmm. uh, doing doing some similar things that you said the new facility will have that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you also have something you're using right now. Talk to us a little bit about just that tool and how it's important, you know, to really be efficient in your teaching with those guys. Yeah, 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 man. I shoot. I could I could go in on this. Yeah. So it started back when uh, at LSU, Coach Aranda would always be going on the road, visiting different places and. He had visited a couple of NFL teams. One of the ones that's popping off my head was the Bills and just talked about seeing that they had a walkthrough room. I think he said the Patriots as well. And he had, you know, of course, he had a lot a lot of say-so in the building of the facility at LSU. And boom, so we had a walkthrough room. You know, that's kind of fast-forwarded version. But Rob Everett came down and, you know, taught me go Army. And, you know, we use it for – I mean, we use it literally – every day at LSU in our weekly game plan prep. And, you know, the main things that we use it for was formation recognition because the inside linebacker's room was connected to the walkthrough room. So that kind of made it super easy to 
Coach Randall would teach a, teach a install, and he would, you know, go through, hey, these are the plays we see in the day. In the last five, ten minutes of meetings, he would just walk the guys right, which was connected to it, into the walkthrough room. And for the last five minutes of everybody's meeting, we would get all the skilled players, so linebackers and DBs, and we would bring everybody in there and do motion adjustments. So that was really the key thing, and that's one of the things that it really still helps us with today is motion adjustments and, 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 and formation recognition. Uh, you know, talking about later on in the postseason at LSU in 2019, uh, you know, we just had different rules and stuff that we th- – little things we wanted to do to tweak the front, you know, to just put us in a position of success to keep us with a hard edge. And, you know, the linebackers had to be able to see the formation and set the front. And, you know, it was it was a lot of rules. You know, we it was based off of what plays we were seeing. And, you know, Coach Randa every day would at least spend five to ten minutes with those guys, seeing a formation – having to make a call, seeing a formation, having to make a call, you know, and it's, you could get so many reps because it's just the click of a mouse. You know, you're not really having to give guys cards. You're not really having to shuffle guys around. You're not even really even having to find a whole lot of bodies with you being a, a shortage of bodies. You really just, you know, you roll out like the holes, you know, like the little holes with the, with the guard tackle mm-hmm. center on it, and boom, you pulling up go army edge, you flipping through formations and guys are using – the alignments based off the holes, but they looking up at the, you know, the screen that's projected on the wall. So they looking up at the projector that's, you know, projected on the wall and they like, Hey, boom, single left, single right, you know, boom, spinning it off. And, 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 and even today we don't really have the same caliber of walkthrough room here at Baylor that we had at LSU. Uh, we will in the new facility, but even today I still use it as form of teaching exact alignments. Hey, here, it's a wing. Where do we need to align? You know, showing them, a picture of, you know, you just go on go Army Edge and you can get that guy in that exact alignment that you want him in. You say, hey, versus a wing, this is how we should look. This is our aiming point. You know, you're just using it to teach it exact, especially, you know, when it comes to introduction, like how we're doing right now, T-shirts and shorts. Mm-hmm. Boom, I, I can get that guy aligned exactly how I want. I can teach off of it. I can go to the next one. So have him aligned exact. Hey, right here, you see the back is away, but, hey, we got this tight end away from us you can be expecting to get kicked out right here. We might want to tighten down right here. Boom, I show a picture of a guy in a tight five, five aligned foot to foot. Boom, move on to the next one. And, and that's really helped me a lot with just having those exact alignments. You know what I'm saying? That way you give it to them, you print it out on the eight box, give it to those guys that I'm taking home, and that's just one thing that kind of speeds up the process of us having our alignments exactly how you want them to be. Yeah, such an important part of it. And the, the beauty of that technology is you're not messing around with a scout team. You're just hitting the next button exactly. to get that back up there the right way. And, and not only that, not only that, Keith, but something else. I'm sorry, but, but one other thing that I realized helped us a lot is you can set the angle. So like, let's just say you load your playlist, right? And you want the guy to see this motion from like this angle, from like the perspective of a linebacker. You want to see it from like the perspective of a safety. Boom, you can build your playlist and then you set the angle yeah. from that perspective. And that way when you pull it up, so like, you know, you don't have a lot of time. The coaches want it efficient, so everybody gets in a room and you like, hey, like you just hitting play, next, next, next. Like, hey, you know what I'm saying? It's already set the way you want it. Instead of each play, you having to adjust it and move the camera around and all that stuff. Yeah, no, that's, it, it's such a great tool for that. It's something I've used before. I used it, as I was telling you, for pass pro blitz pickup and just 15-minute period, which we would get in. I think, you know, it depended if we were home or away. On Fridays, if we were home, we'd get an extra one in. But 15-minute period, getting 60 to 65 reps in compared to what, you know, would take me probably 45 minutes right. to to do that if I had actual people I'm having to move around. So just just very efficient and able to getting more of those mental reps important things right alignment right. is important you guys can't get aligned right that you're not starting off for success that's right that's right that's right it's it's it's, it's been good to us man and i remember because of course coach doesn't know but i just remember like you know here at bailey he was like yeah hey can we get that kind of rolling like get some go army stuff rolling like you know how much does it cost I was like, Coach, that, that was free. That's right. He's like, the one we used that was free. I'm like, yeah, Coach, that was free. Like, you know, like, that's that's one of the beauty of it. Like, you know, that, that Go Army Edge program is free. You know, all you really need is a screen. That's exactly it, yeah. We'll, we'll head back to the actual stuff, on the field stuff. We were going to talk a little bit about 
uh, some of your progressions here. And the first one was just the footwork. And you mentioned to me that uh, that's, that's evolved a little bit and then went back to simplifying it. So talk to us about your, your rush footwork. We teach rush footwork. And, and really what all that is is, man, just getting the guys going forward. You know, you have drop footwork, which is really more of like, you know, if, you, if you're talking in terms of D-line play, really the base way to put it is rush footwork is really more attack-react style. Drop footwork is more react attack. You know, we take a six-inch gather step, and then now we generate power from our hips, our hands, and then our feet. Wise, I feel like rush footwork is more generating power uh, from the ground up. So hips, hands, and feet. So really, rush footwork is just being loaded up on your front foot. You know, having a good base, having like you know a weight room base, feet about shoulder width apart, to help guys understand what I'm looking for as far as they stance. So I say knee over your toe, chest over your knee good base and then you just driving out we some teams teach inside foot up outside foot back here at baylor we teach you know outside foot up inside foot back because that allows us to train the guy the same way you would a, a defensive end or a d lineman so it's a lot of continuity across our front rather than this one guy having different footwork so anyway we just teach and rolling off that front foot getting my power foot down generating power from the ground striking on the rise and you trying to lift you know, we, we use that term a lot, lifting, trying to take the bend out of his knees. You lifting, you using your whole lower body to lift that guy. So uh, that's pretty much rush footwork, just outside foot up, inside foot back, weight loaded, knee over your toe, chest over your knee, and you're going to drive off that front foot or drive off that down foot and generate power by getting your power foot in the ground and lifting the offensive line. You know, if you get a base block. Of course, if you get a down block, we say sit and serve. Uh, you get a reach block, same thing. I'm trying to lift, setting the edge. And, of course, if, if I got high hat and I'm rushing, then, of course, I'm going to rush the passer. If, I, if I'm a dropper, again, they should both look the same. The offensive line shouldn't be able to look at us and say, okay, hey, he's rushing and he's dropping. And that was one of the things, you, you know, even when we was teaching rush and drop footwork, you would try to say, hey, these need to look the same. You know, the weight distribution need to look the same. Like, even though you have drop responsibilities on these plays, even though your weight distribution in your feet is, is slightly different because you a dropper, you would try to say they need to look the same. But as the season would go along, if you're not careful, then now you easily, you have an easy tell about, okay, hey, look at, you know, put a, put a bunch of the steel shots of the jacks together. You can tell he's rushing here. You can tell he's dropping here. And that's the danger of it. That's why I'm glad we only doing, you know, rush footwork now where every play we should be, you know, going forward. We should be, you know, going forward, attacking. It, it, everything is attack, react. You get what I'm saying? And then, of course, we'll get to, we'll progress to our drop responsibility or we'll react to hi-hat rather than thinking, you know, boom, I want to react to this guy. Oh, I got hi-hat. Let me get to my cover responsibility. So, you know, that's really one of the things that, that, that that's really how we teaching our guys here at Baylor as far as rush footwork goes. It's no different than, you know, a, a defensive line coach would, would coach attack, react. In describing this player, this Jack, you said you wanted him to be an alpha, especially when it came to pass rush. Somebody that had to be accounted for. And, I mean, hey, with today's defenses, there's always a, a guy like that, it seems. Everybody has somebody that, that you really got to worry about, maybe get help for. But you still need that guy. You know, even if he's getting double teamed, triple teamed, whatever it might be, you need him to be able to still get to that quarterback. So what are some of the key things you're teaching in your pass rush progressions? Starting off with just get off, man. I mean, and honestly, that's something that I feel like I could have even done a better job of emphasizing is just the importance of get off. Like I think uh, last year, a lot of it went, oh, okay, third down, a, a ball get off key. But, you know, really just from learning from different people this off season, Coach Aranda always sets us up to, clinic and, you know, learn from different people and just to be a, you know, just to be an ongoing learner. And that's really just, man, key whatever moves first. You know, as you start to study offensive lines and you start to look at this and that, man, sometimes, you know, you may have a tackle that, you know, he'll drop his weight first. So, you know, whenever that ball's about to snap, or you may have a guard that has a cue when the ball's about to be snapped. So it's helpful for coaches not to only think ball key, to key whatever moves first. And that's something that I feel like I can do a better job of this season instead of just teaching, hey, we're going to key this. You know, whether it's the, 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 the back knee or whether it's the tip of the pad, whatever's moving first, that's what I feel like your, your study throughout the week needs to be. And 
key that. So, so I would say that's, that's step number one and, and, and making get off, you know, as competitive as it can be, you know, doing some every day where guys are competing and get off and putting a premium on ball, get off being key is something that I feel like is what it all starts with. Because if you got a great get off and, and you forcing the tackle, man, you forcing his hand, uh, or you forcing this set, then then you already <laughs> you are you already won you know a big part of the battle. I think the next thing that I really try to get my guys to understand is just you know drawing a line, understanding the overset, understanding hey the path from me to the quarterback, having this imaginary line in my head about hey is the tackle before he gets his second kick in is he past that? All right, then now I need to be thinking more inside, you know, a counter moves. The next part in, in the progression is really just rush angles. It's very rare that you have, like, just that true speed rusher guy. Like, if, if you got that guy, you know, power to you, like you knew that coming in that he was going to be a speed rusher guy. But for a lot of guys, pass rush is really more along the mindset of combat, so hand combat. So really just trying to teach guys about rush angles, about understanding, hey, if I'm going to take that path where I'm racing this guy up the field, I'm trying to beat him to the spot four yards up the field, or really it's just it's really more of, I say four yards up the field for, like, younger guys who, uh, it's, 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 you know, you're trying to get them to understand, but it's really more about closing the space to the hip. So racing to the spot, speed angle guys, boom, you know, that's one angle. And then you have more of your edge rushers, which is, you know, you pointed more at the quarterback from your stance. You get what I'm saying? So you in your stance. You pointed more at the quarterback, and now, boom, you stepping on his toes, trying to either force a bad set or trying to get him to slow his feet down so you can work back on the edge. And another thing that I like about the power angle or edge rush or edge angle is if that guy stops his feet, then, you know, the chances of him stopping his feet and then restarting them, that's a battle that we should win, right? Just just talking about body, just talking about athleticism, talking about, uh, again, just that the mentality of us we thinking, hey, if I step on his toes, so if I take that edge angle, if I take that power and I step on his toes and I get back to an edge and he powers down, so if he feels threatened by me approaching him right now and he powers down and I get back on the edge, then, hey, I should win that. He shouldn't be able to stop his feet and restart his feet. If he did, he'd probably be playing D-line if, if he could really do that at a high level, if he had feet quick enough to do that. So, you know, that's a big part of what I'm talking about when I say rush angles. A lot of times with a lot of the guys, I think we have like one or two guys that are true speed rushers, but majority of our guys are going to be edge rush guys. So that's where a lot of like, you know, just the whole synchronization between the hands and and the feet come into play. As a front wise, we really don't really emphasize too much on hip flip because we teach so much about upper body violence. We really, really, really stress upper body violence and allowing the violence that you, you know, you, you use your hands with in hand-to-hand combat, allowing that violence to really allow your hips to follow through. If you violent enough with, I feel like, your upper body turn, whether it's a double swipe, stab, chop, then your hips will naturally follow through. But if you put too much emphasis on the hip flip, then now you may find yourself in a position where, you know, you're giving up your chest mm-hmm. or something like that. So yeah. we really teach upper body violence. And, but, yeah, so, so that's really the rush angles. So the next thing I think as far as, you know, that's really the basis of it, just stance and get off, drawing a line, making sure under guys understand rush angles, understanding who you're going against. Like, for instance, if I'm, a, if I'm a speed rusher, then, you know, boom, when I get to that spot, I need to understand, hey, is this guy vertical and high? You know, I, I need to understand the position of the tackle. You know, is he vertical and high? Is he vertical and low? You know, is he horizontal? Did he have a really good set in his pads of horizontal? Well, then now it's no chance of me working any inside moves because there's no point in me even thinking about working an inside move versus horizontal pads. So it's just, you know, just teaching the guys that, you know, we, we have little sayings and things we do to drill it, you know, vertical and high, spin it by, snatch it by, club it by, you know, vertical and low, we say point the toe, or you really want to try to do something to not get washed by the quarterback. When You know, when I say vertical and low, I'm saying he's in a position to where he's beat, and his only chance of recovering is to wash me by the quarterback. So we say vertical and low, you want to point the toe. And then as far as a lot of our edge rush stuff, you know, we really talking about combat and we talking about just hands and feet synchronization, understanding the type of set, understanding, okay, boom, I took that edge angle. Is his pass horizontal? Is his pass vertical? And going from there. Because a lot of times if you're going to take an edge angle or a power angle and you're going to step on that guy, if he takes like a normal vertical set where he's kicking for depth, then you should naturally fall inside. 
Like, you know what I'm saying? It should happen naturally. But if he does, you know, boom, shorten his step up and, and slow his feet down, then now I'm looking to see, okay, is his pads horizontal or are they vertical? You know, if his pads are horizontal, then now I want to try to get back to an edge as quick as I can. If his pads are vertical, now I want to try to, you know, beat the inside hand and take an inside move. And as far as drill organization, I really like to think about it in terms of skills and drills. Like, I like to think about things that we need to be working. So, you know, you have, like, your move toolbox, which is like, you know, chop, dip, rip, uh, freeze, rush, long arm, stab, chop. Uh, pool slide, you know, just your move to a box. And then you also think about other things you need to work, uh, such as like bend, you know, when it comes to working bend, the hoops are good. These are just natural, these are just not, I shouldn't say natural, but these are just skills and drills that I think for the outside linebackers, uh, we need to be consciously aware of, hey, slidness in our engine, you know, rush awareness, you know, understanding the level of the quarterback, finding ways to drill that to where, hell, sometimes it can be a pop up. Well, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm rushing against an offensive tackle, but, you know, boom, I get to the spot and I see the quarterback is stepping up, then, hey, I need to be thinking, hey, I need to be aware of that. I don't need to continue to try to run the hoop. I need to try to be thinking, okay, I can, I can go ahead and snatch this guy by a work an inside move. And, you know, upper body violence, we talked about that. So that's like, you know, your bags, your bag drills, your big bags, your tight bags, quick hands, doing things like that. And, and get off and rush angles and just, just finding ways to constantly be working those skills and drills. Like I said, get off, being rush awareness, upper body violence, uh, having your moves in your toolbox and rush angles. So um, that's pretty much it, man. I think that's really how I think about teaching pass rush. Great detail you shared with us, Coach, there, and appreciate you taking the time to go through that whole teaching progression and share some of those things with us today. If our listeners want to connect with you, what's the best way to do that? Twitter, so B U underscore Coach Collins, and and yeah, man, I know this. I know your podcast, coaches, is, is popular, and you know I've listened to several coaches get on there and talk. So, so man, I appreciate you for giving me this opportunity, man, just to get on here and talk. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate you taking the time, and best of luck to you and the Baylor Bears in 2023. Yes, sir. Thank you, Coach. Thank you again for listening to the Coach and Coordinator podcast. Be sure to check out coachandcoordinator.com, our show notes there, our blogs, and the other content that we are adding to our website constantly. Follow us on Twitter as well, at Coach K. Grabowski.